Well, when you look at the KDJ trend here, same things happen in a daily chart too, because even the price is hitting higher and higher, but the short-term KDJ signal is gradually forming a downtrend. So, so today is a regular item, crypto assets weekly analysis and market forecast, November 30 to December 6th. Okay, so let's start. So as usual, this is my portfolio strategy. So I only arc my assets to the Bitcoin and all the arc which is related to these six categories. And if you want to deepen your understanding of my portfolio strategy, please check out my other video about my portfolio strategy. Okay. And in my portfolio allocation states as of now, and last week, I sold all my token that I hold for STMX. I got a plus 26% return. And then I additionally invested in KP3O, okay? one of the Andy Cronjes project. And then this is my current portfolio allocations. And then let's start from the Bitcoin. And then let's start analysis from the BTC USDT early chart, seven days version. And then last week, the BTC price tried twice, all time highest record price. And the first one is first trial, this one. On a December 1st, 0 a.m., it's gonna hit $19,863. And then around one day later, same day, December 1st, 8 p.m., it's gonna hit $70,888 here. But this second trial actually tried to hit upper $20,000. It's kind of critical psychological price line for the BTC, but it's eventually fell to this number that is why right after this, the trader set the huge selling pressure in a short period of time and the BTC price is plunged into $87.1 on 10 p.m. on the same day. And after that, as you can see here, the price is composing like this way. So the frag formations are coming up to the market right now, okay? And then once we're going to move to the daily chart, it's much more clear. As you can see, it's flag formations. Then one of the other indicators that I pay attention to is actually KDJ. The short-term indicator crossing strongly the mid-term and long-term indicator here. Right after that, the short-term indicator is hovering on top of the middle and long-term indicator. Eventually, KDJ trend in daily chart based one is weakening last week okay so from this perspective this frog formation will be the last chance for us to hit over twenty thousand dollars within this year and then kind my prediction is probably hitting lower side will be higher possibility than hitting upper side about detailed analysis about this point is let me tell you later with the fundamental analysis okay and a weekly chart Last week price movement was great because you know two weeks ago in a candle chart basis analysis BTC hits almost like a turning point on this candle chart but finally hit the upper side. We can confirm that BTC still keep the stronger momentum in the market. But when you look at the KDJ trend here, same things happen in a daily chart too because even the price is hitting higher and higher but the short term KDJ signal is gradually forming a downtrend. And then, you know, middle and long-term indicator try to hit the, this short-term trend. So which means once the short-term indicator dead cross, you know, middle and long-term trend, the BTC price tend to be bearish trend. That's another reason that you know, I see a little bit negative position on a BTC within a this year, okay? And then from here, the fundamental analysis. Let's start from the BTC hash rate, mining competitions. Last week, this next, you know, BTC hash rate it's gonna hit plus over 7%, but now going down to 0.86%, so it's a little bearish, okay? Then CMA BTC futures. Last week, one month price difference average hits $193. Super bullish. The two weeks ago, that price 71.25, so plus 27% increase. And usually, after this price hits over $100, we're going to see some correction moments like this number. And then when you look at the trend volume here, still high level, but it's gradually, you know, getting decreased. 
with these stats, we can see some kind of bearish trend coming to the market this week and the next week. Okay. And the oil market cap and the BTC dominant slates. Market cap plus 4.9%. Last week was around 2%. So relatively strong. And the BTC dominant slates is plus 0.4%. It's a little bit strong. And still, I seriously pay attention to the long term analysis of the BTC dominant slates. In my analysis, in long term, next bottom timing in you know, a red mark area in here will be around here, will be next favorably. And then the stats target will be around 51 to 52 percent in you know, BTC dominant slates. And next peak at timing, they're gonna probably hit around 64 to 65 percent, will be March to May 2021. Okay. But the most importantly, in super long term, the BTC dominance rate is all the time bearish because our coin market will be developing more and more. And the USDT price and the market cap trend, plus 3.0%, still very large increase. So eventually, consecutively for five weeks, our market cap of the USDT is over 3% increase in weekly basis. But this number itself is gradually decreasing these days. So we might see some kind of peak out on this USDT newly issued stuff, you know, next week or two weeks later, which means that it's a little bit bearish signal on the altcoin market too. Okay. On a grayscale Bitcoin trust last week, just like a Bitcoin GBTC hits the highest record price, $24.06, December 3rd. This is great. And then on Friday, it's kind of closed at 23.22. Okay. But just like a Bitcoin, as you can see, it's strung around these points here. So uh, it's a little bit you know, gradually hit the peak out level. And the grayscale investment Bitcoin positioning, plus 3.86% since November 29th. Great increase last week because BTC price hit the historically highest record price. That's why. Okay. And the Google search trend. As you can see, it's kind of interesting trend coming to the market. So gold hit plus 988, got back to the popularity, while BTC minus 5. Look like, you know, general audience popularity in the BTC is getting a little bit decreased. And the USD, no change. Ethereum, since they're going to, you know, completed the ETH 2.0 release, so popularity is getting decreased. Minus 1, and then number is 1, okay? And the gold price. Finally, we're going to see the price push back here. And on Friday, the price is closed, 1837 So from this in a pushback moment, the things we can learn from here is that a lot of investors recognize this price line on the gold, around $760 or so, is a very cheap. Okay, that's the things we can learn from here. And the next one, US Treasury 10-year real yield curve. Still the bullish trend. Minus 1.0% and again, then it's gonna hit 0.92% minus. So as you can see, the inflation risk it's so powerful in the current financial system right now. And the S&P 500, overall the bullish trend. Then December 4th, November employment rate in the U.S. is finally released, and the number was 6.7%. October was 6.9%, so keeping a little bit the higher range here. So that is why price experience is a little bit in a short-term crash here. But right after that, price is a recovery like this way. And in a Friday, it's going to close at 3699.1. So which means that inflation's effects on the stock market is still quite strong. And when you look at the NASDAQ, almost same movement. The price closed at 12,528.48. Okay. And compared with SRP, the effects of the US unemployment rate is much smaller than SRP here, as you can see. And the US economy events, December 7th to December 11th. As usual, new job was claimed Thursday, 10th. And the last number is this one, 712,000. Okay. And from here is the fundamental news. Let's start from the COVID 19 as usual. Almost no change. Total infection plus 6.9%. Last week was 7.1%, so almost no change. Death rate is 5.5%. Last week was 5.2%, so a little bit increased. On my analysis, looks like you know third wave of the COVID-19 is getting improved 
And then, you know, the Christmas season is coming up for the market entirely over the world. With this trend, I think you know, this stat itself is getting improved. That's what I'm thinking about, okay? And the next news, still bullish, MicroStrategy buys another 15 millions in a Bitcoin. Great. These actions stimulate lots and lots of public company in the US starting to buy Bitcoin as a treasury reserve assets. So this movement is great. And another kind of same type of actions by investor Whirlpool to liquidate all the gold to the BTC and the ETH backs crypto regulations. This type of you know, actions all the time stimulates the coupling of the you know, crypto assets from the traditional assets such as gold, bond, and stock. So this is great actions. And finally, SRB Dow Jones indices built crypto indexing capability with Luca. With the great momentum in the BTC, crypto asset itself is getting the great CB lights from the very traditional company like SNP, so this is great too. And the next news, Willie Wu, one of a very popular crypto analysis, he made a price prediction of the Bitcoin in 2021. And he said, my top model suggesting 200,000 per BTC by end of 2021 looks conservative. And he said, 300,000 dollars not out of the questions. But my price prediction 2021 is 150,000 to 200,000 dollars considering the inflation rate of the corona shock too. So it looks like my number itself is very conservative for him. But this is great. Next news, Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak cryptocurrency takes off. Wozniak recently started his own company, eFords, which business about electricity trading services with the cryptocurrency model. He issued his own token to raise some capital for this new business, eFoods. And I think this type of approach will be getting popular by influencers. In the end, a lot of individuals who have certain level of you know, publicity in the market, like YouTuber or Instagrammer, starting to take this kind of same approach too. So this is kind of great actions. That's what I'm thinking about, okay? The next news, Waiters tells Biden to resign OCC crypto guidance may be part of anti-Trump, anti-crypto offensive. So this another great actions made by Democratic leader, the Waiters, because she's trying to eliminate all the anti-regulation for the crypto assets led by Trump administrations. Which means that once we can realize these type of constructive actions against Biden administrations, because both are the member of the Democratic parties, it's a great follow wind for the entire crypto industry. Because currently, the US economy itself is a leading player to build this pioneer industry. That's why. Okay. All right, as usual, we are waiting for to realize this formula. So more and more retail investor and the institutional investor recognize crypto economy has much bigger potential than US dollar economy. Crypto economy experiences exponential growth. To realize this formula, what we are waiting for is second Nixon shock after 1972, second US dollar crisis, okay? And from here, it's our coin. Let's start with ETH, Ethereum. So as usual, three major growth project staff from DAC.com, Ethereum, Tron, EOS, and last week, huge plunge on Ethereum. The Ethereum keeping their momentum with the release of the Ethereum 2.0, then finally the release is successfully down. So it looks like, you know, kind of correction moment of Ethereum right now. But for you guys, looks like this plunge is huge decrease. But when you look at the historical data of the Ethereum transactions, it's huge increase. So with the rise of the DeFi ecosystem, Ethereum hits great transaction growth. And September was kind of peak out level of the DeFi bubble moment, but still Ethereum transaction volume level is still keeping higher. And then now they have Ethereum 2.0. Ethereum momentum is getting stronger and stronger. That we can confirm from here, okay? And another great news coming up from the market. Binance and Coinbase Finally, they're going to join ETH 2.0 staking services. Currently, the minimum requirements to join the ETH 2.0 staking services, you have to hold over 32 ETH. 
which is totally not a small amount of money, right? But once the Binance and Coinbase to measure central exchange, join this, you know, staking services, even your ETH holding number is much smaller than 32 ETH, you can get some ETH reward with this, you know, staking services. Since, you know, Binance and Coinbase, the two major central crypto exchange, it's completely clear that lots and lots of other crypto exchange will join these services. So, which means that Ethereum, ETH 2.0 staking infrastructure getting stronger and more sustainable. Okay, so this is great. And the MakerDAO, MKR. So, lending market updates. Total TVL plus 4.9%. And the make it out 4.6%, compound plus 6.4%, and the Abe plus 2.2%. So it looks like you know it's now the time of the altcoin time moments, comparison between the BTC market developments. We can confirm that gradually additional money coming into lending marketplace too. And the key news: PayPal's Bitcoin adaptation expands Pax stable coin by 100 million. Great, because now we have Livler, they finally changed the name to DM by Facebook. And now we have Paxos with the PayPal, another major stablecoin project. So it looks like next year will be the huge market momentum of the stablecoin will come up to the market. So this is great news. And the next project, Uniswap. And as usual, the trading volume comparison between Central Exchange and the DEX, the stats last week's was 36 to 1, but this week is 30 to 1. Key things we need to pay attention to is almost no change in a DEX volume level. Most of the things happen in a central exchange. As you can see, the trading volume here, it's much more than last week, which means that capital injection from the fiat money to the crypto asset market also decreasing. Okay? So it's also another key signal that, you know, bearish trend coming up to the BTC market too. Okay? And the Young Finance Wi Fi. So, asset market updates total TBL plus 3.2%, WBTC plus 2.7%, Harvest Finance plus 7.3%, Young Finance 4.7%, and the RenVM plus 3.4%. So, just like we're going to see the lending marketplace steady increase on the asset market too, which means that additional money. It's coming into this market too, right? And the key news updates. DeFi protocol, Yang Finance, and the SushiSwap announced merger. Yang Finance finally assets to the SushiSwap DEX you know, platform too for the asset management optimizations. Another ecosystem development is happening on Yang Finance. This is great, okay? And the next one, Theater. The Theater Labs announces Edgecast better with World Poker Tour Broadcast Partnership. Edgecast is one of the great products released by Sierra Network. So every single DApps developer can develop their decentralized video streaming services with their technology. And the first deal is World Poker Tour. Ecosystem development on the Sierra Network also growing right now. This is great. And the Nexus Mutual, NXM. So another great product coming out from Nexus Mutual. Custody cover is now live. Contracts are live and open for staking so that the user of the centralized exchange and the custodian can purchase custody cover. And these are the first six custodians. So DeFi space still facing the serious problem with the hacking incident by using fraction services, especially in the DEX space. You know, pricing digital mechanism is completely different from the central exchange one with the order book system. A lot of hackers manipulate the price in a DEX system and then they're gonna use a fractional attack. But now the Nexus Mutual released their custodian cover services as their insurance product. This is a great solution to the DeFi market. And Perkodot dot. So key news, introducing the Open Oracle Gateway for the Polkadot and Akalar, one of the ecosystem players in the Polkadot, starting the services. It's a kind of long-term issue, but as I told you guys all the time, 
Now the ETA 2.0 is a great momentum. Finally achieved a great scalability with the proof of stake model. But in long term, a lot of DeFi project or other DApps player will graduate from the Ethereum. They gonna will have their own blockchain like Serial Network. So which means that now the next stage, the software technology that we need is blockchain interoperability software. Polkadot is one of the highest potential projects in that space. Then Polkadot also developing a lot of like a DeFi solution in the market for their long-term developments. And now they also release their open Oracle services just like a chain link on the ecosystem with the Akala project. It's a long-term development, but it's also great news for their DeFi solution in long term. Okay. And a chain link link. So another key app news here. So the, we are excited to support the open source development of the in-demand Ethereum infrastructure project by donating funds to the Gitcoin grants round eight. The Chainlink strongly believe that contributing to the open source ecosystem that we will correctly rely on. I know that some of the retail investors are discussing that you know Chainlink is looks like you know fighting with Ethereum, and in my opinion too that you know I don't see such kind of you know software confliction between Chainlink and Ethereum because Chainlink is seriously focused on connectivity with the existing cloud infrastructure on the decentralized infrastructure here. So Chainlink just like a player like a bridge player here. And now Ethereum momentum is quite strong. So which means that for Chainlink, try to integrate a lot of the existing crowd services into the DeFi space, it's much more beneficial for them. So this is a great move by Chainlink. Okay. And another key news, why DeFi flash on attacks will keep happening? Chainlink co-founder said, as I told you in the previous slide about Nexus Mutual new insurance product, actually one of the reasons why flash on hacking problem is occasionally happen in a DeFi space because of the pricing mechanism on a DEX system. So the, if the DEX system decided to use the price fees on a chain link, that kind of risk we can eliminate. But we have to be a little bit careful on this. Of course, this is quite beneficial for the DEX ecosystem, but the you know, key concept of the DEX itself is try to eliminate the fully centralized plus additional mechanism stuff. I think you know, DEX system itself still continuously focus on innovation of the decentralized processing mechanism model, including eliminating the fraction risk. So still we need to pay attention to the technical developments of this issue. And a bit trend. So the Tron Bittrend partnership is a Huawei. It's one of the great news on a bit trend, but you know, the key things we have to pay attention to is that uh, Huawei is now facing the serious trouble with the 5G smart home market developments because of the trading war between China and US. I think that you know, Biden administrations will recover such kind of negative relationship between US and China, but it takes time. Currently, Huawei has been excluded by a lot of like a you know, 5G mobile player in a global basis stuff. So uh, this is a great partnership, but uh, compared with Seattle's partnership with Samsung in a 5G moment, effectiveness of this partnership will come up to the market. It little takes time. That's what I'm thinking about. Okay. So as usual, this is the final slide. Hodo is the best for retail investor to minimize the risk and the maximize the return because investment in our coin project just like an investment in early days of the google and facebook and then when you look at the legendary angel investors such as ron conway Lee hoffman and peter Thiel, all the time they're going to take the simple investment approach is long-term investment then here's another evidence from the binance that this is a bitcoin case all the time longest holder maximize their investment return in this analysis longest holder hit the plus 220 percent return much larger than short-term investor here. I also recommend you guys to do the same approach too, okay? So that is all this time. I also make a lot of interesting videos on the crypto and blockchain space. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye.